This is one of the best examples of women find attractive that I see on the internet. I'm gonna add to it as we go along, giving you that real life dating coach perspective that's coming at it from years of experience. The name of the channel is called On Point Fresh, and this guy definitely makes some very interesting content. Without the way, let's jump right into it. The biggest mistake guys make when looking to make themselves more attractive to women is that they often do it through the lens of the male gaze rather than the female gaze. I recently saw that- And this is very true. There was a study that came out that showed there's no correlation between what men think women find attractive and what women actually find attractive, i.e. men have no idea what women actually like. This tweet on my timeline, and it sparked an interesting thought in my head. How can women be so enamored with tall, jack, masculine guys, but at the same time, swarms of women are also attracted. And yeah, the Roy Dow bodybuilder look is a perfect example of this because this is what a lot of men aspire to and it's something that very few women actually find attractive. A lot of women, when they look like Ronnie Coleman is prime, they think gross. If you're wondering what the ideal body type is, it's Casino Royale Daniel Craig. The two members of BTS. In that way, the tweet is not wrong. What women are attracted to has huge variance and the biggest mistake we make as guys is to try to distill it down to a science when it's anything but that. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the female gaze versus the male gaze. Part 1. The female gaze at its core is story driven. There's a reason why the best selling books year after year are romance novels, and the biggest consumers of them are women. There's also a reason why the fanfic community is almost exclusively women writing about fictional characters. It's the same reason why artists and musicians throughout history have been loved by women. They tell a story with- I would add also, if you look at porn that's designed for females, there's a massive story element. It doesn't just jump into two lesbians scissoring each other. There's massive amounts of buildup, right? Because women do really need that foreplay. They need that behind the scenes story. Your creativity. You also tell a story every time you walk out of the door. You just don't realize it. The way you dress, your choice of hair. What do you think is the best hairstyle a guy can have? Fluffy middle part. Yeah. Yeah. High fade. You have a mullet, it's good. Kind of the Patrick Dempsey look. The way you walk. As a dating coach, when I get asked the question about haircuts, I think generally for most people, a fade or a skin fade is the ideal haircut, but it can definitely vary based on your hairstyle and your face. The way you look away instantly if you meet eye contact. To shoot and you love design, so you're basically a match made in heaven, right guys? Interest, yeah. yeah. Your body language. These all tell a story and women pick up on it. Part two, looks matter. This is not at all to say that women don't like or prefer a handsome guy. A nice jawline, slight facial hair, height, a lean physique, darker features, and a mix of masculine and feminine features. The only part of this I disagree with is darker features, right? That really depends on the girls you're going for. If you're going for Scandinavian or Polish girls who generally have lighter features, then yes, having darker features will be an advantage. However, if you're going for like Latinas or Italian girls who have darker features, actually having lighter features like myself will be an advantage because again, people generally want something that is rare. If you wanted to create a guy that appeals to the most amount of women worldwide, he'd probably look something like Michael Marone from the movie 365 Days. But even when it comes to looks, there's a huge variance in types. Make him a bit more feminine and you have Zayn Malik. Make him more masculine and you have Giga Chat. But remember, as a complete side note, the whole Giga Chat image was actually just a computer rendering of a program that some chick in Russia did and just caught on on the internet. Remember, this is just ideals. As a guy yourself, if your type is tall blondes, it doesn't mean you wouldn't go for a short brunette. Part 3. The Black Pill Antidote For some reason, when men hear of women's ideals of being tall, fit, and rich, it makes them feel down on themselves and hopeless. I've always repeated that the biggest cure for being black billed is spending an hour in any busy downtown square and observing couples. Here's what you'll see through a male gaze. Average guys with average girls average guys with beautiful girls. This is because- So he's got the right idea, but it requires a very important addition because if a black pillar is watching, you know, average guys with attractive girls, they're gonna think, oh, he's beta buxing, he must be a sugar daddy. What you need to do is actually go and interact with these people. Now, if you're not doing street interviews, interacting with couples might be weird, but just going out and hitting on girls, getting real life experience will show you how a lot of the shit that you're told on the internet by a bunch of dudes isn't actually true. Women don't view male attractiveness as a purely physical equation. Why do I love this kind of man? And a lot of other women do too. They are super confident. They're secure, they're self-validating. They don't need you to like them. They don't need to be the center of attention. Last but not least, they're mysterious. As men, we put so much emphasis on physical attractiveness that it's the only thing we compare when we see a couple. Your humor, voice, smell, charisma, kindness, skills, potential, how you treat her, others, animals, kids, your love language, nature, empathy, and so many other things dictate how attractive you are through the female gaze. 
Part four. So that is also very much true. Men operate by a one zero system. One, you would fuck. Zero, you would not. Women are more like zero, one, two. Zero, you would not fuck. Two, you would fuck. And one is you're not sure. And the vast majority of men are one. Or the female gaze is like Play-Doh. Here's what I mean by this. If a girl is not attracted to a guy at first glance, the physical attraction can still grow a ton once she knows him even a little bit better. This is very common. A majority of men fall into the, yeah, he's all right category. As they get to know him, he can either plummet into I would never or elevate into he's really hot. Pete is, has got to be literally- Yes, yeah, so that's where majority of guys can fall into and whether they wind up in the I'm gonna fuck this guy or this guy's a loser category is gonna depend on their confidence, charisma, boundaries, body language, all the things that you know most black dealers don't even talk about. The best human being I've ever met. This is a bit hard to understand for a lot of guys because when we see a beautiful girl at first glance, we can fall in love and imagine our life together in a house on a prairie with four kids. Don't do that. Part five, relative versus absolute. Now let's talk about three things that absolutely pertain to the female gaze, height, income, and status. We've all heard the phrase six figures, six feet, and a six pack. All of these things are appealing, but here's where most guys are getting it wrong. When girls say they want a taller guy, this is a relative term. It means they want a guy that's taller than them. Same for income and status. Statistically, most couples in these categories have the following thing in common. The man is only a few inches taller than the woman. The man makes slightly more money. What would you want his income to be if you're gonna be a stay-at-home mom? Yeah, they did a study that looked at couples and the vast majority of them date within their socioeconomic class. So you know who that girl who works at McDonald's is dating? Another guy who works at McDonald's. Um, what kind of range would his income be? I think for me to be comfortable like staying at home and not working, like 300,000. Anywhere from 70 to 100K. Probably 150 to a quarter of a million a year. And you would contribute also 50-50. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. You'd be willing to do up to 50. Yeah, absolutely. Status is hard to calculate, but we can assume this is probably true too. And let's be honest, pretty much every guy lies about their height. And there's two different types of status. The first is the international status, which is basically like being a celebrity or an influencer, and that's not available to 99.9% .9 of men. But there's a different kind of status that a lot of men can achieve. It's a local status, which means being having status within your social group or within a certain type of social circle, right? Like for example, being very popular in your snowboarding club or at a club or something like that, right? That's something that most guys can actually achieve. Which has majorly skewed people's perception of what six feet or six inches actually looks like. So as long as you're a bit taller and make a bit more money, you're going to be all right. That's very much true. It's gotten to a point where you should actually exaggerate by an inch or two on Tinder. So if you're a guy who's 5'10 and you say you're 5'10, the girl's gonna think you're 5'8. So what you should do is say you're either 5'11 and a half or six feet, right? I typically exaggerate by inch and a half, but I wouldn't really go more than that. Part six, wide appeal versus niche maxing. There's this really corny saying that I love. It goes like this. You can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world, and there's still going to be somebody who hates peaches. And this is very true. A lot of men's content on improving attractiveness can sometimes feel like needing to appeal to as many people as possible. Some traits can be universal. It's never bad to have nice skin and to keep fit, but trying to appeal to as many people- There's more things that would add to that. Good grooming, uh, good fashion, you know, stuff like that would also play a big role. Being single digits body fat- As possible is basically like trying to be the McDonald's of men. Instead, be French cuisine. Find your niche and thrive in that arena. If you're a fitness guy and into bodybuilding, that's great. You're going to go for a certain look and the people you end up attracting will be fitness girls. Historically, most people end up partnered with people- I've personally never been on this whole concept of niche maxing. I think it's just massive overthink. I think basically you should focus on things that women find attractive that you know, like fitness, again, style, skin. If you have a bad hair, get a hair transplant and then focus the rest of your energy on confidence, social skills, charisma, or developing a really good social circle. People that are into their relative class and ethnic group but with how connected we are now due to technology, our tribe has expanded and very much includes niche interests and subcultures. So remember, don't be McDonald's, be French cuisine. Part seven, the Tinder dilemma. We've talked a lot about the female gaze and the different ways men can be attractive. But when it comes down to it, most people are meeting through dating apps and none of those things can be determined from a profile on a dating app. This is why dating apps are such an unnatural way of meeting people and why both men and women seem to hate using them. Swiping up 
So this is where I disagree. I actually like dating apps. Now, get me wrong, there's parts of dating apps that I hate, especially how all these companies are run by SJWs, and as soon as you say something that's mildly inappropriate, you get permabanned, and it's like kind of like a black hole when you try to message customer support. However, I think what dating apps really do well is they allow you to connect with girls that you would normally not have access to. For example, my current girlfriend, Natty, I met on Bumble. I severely doubt I would have ever ran into her, right, because we run in completely different circles, but dating app allowed me to do that. So I think people are very quick to point out how much dating apps suck and those are typically people who are not having success but there's actually also massive advantages to dating apps that people don't really talk about on the man and woman generator is a completely unnatural way to approach dating so it's no shock that unnatural selection habits form from it and why you see lopsided tinder experiments where most men will swipe right on an anamorph picture of a pig because they're so desperate for attention until someone invents a better way of connecting people you can still set up an amazing profile of yourself that tells a story and puts you in the most attractive light possible. Part so he's very much correct. Now he is oversimplifying it. There's a lot more to it than telling a story. You need really good photos. You need photos that are taken by a good camera, good lighting, good angles where you look good, you look natural, you look like you're doing something fun, that's what you want, combined with a witty bio and good text game, right? And that is something that the majority of men can do. The problem is that most men have really, really shitty photos. Eight, why women like bad boys. Lastly, I want to talk about why I believe certain traits and types are deemed more attractive than others through the female gaze. Bad boys are attractive not because they're criminals or dangerous, but because of the traits that they represent. They're typically confident, social, and stand up for themselves and the people around them. Girls like a guy- Yeah, that's true. Women love a guy who has balls. ...that sets boundaries and doesn't let her steamroll him. Being a pushover and having no spine is perhaps the most unattractive qualities in a man and a bad boy represents the exact opposite of this That's very true, and most men are pushovers. ...archetype. It's the actual traits behind the label and what they represent that are actually attractive. Same with being rich. It's nice to date someone wealthy, but it's the qualities behind acquiring wealth that are actually attractive. Hard work, determination, leadership, and creativity. It's the same reason women will date a starving artist if they believe he has potential. I wanted to make this video for one main reason. A lot of men are deriving their self-worth from the validation of being attractive to women, and they try to live up to impossible standards, or in some aspects, standards that they can never reach. There is nothing wrong with trying to become more attractive, but seeing both perspectives on each side will give you a fuller picture and let your true self shine through. Well Thanks for watching. So overall, I think he absolutely nails it. There's some small exceptions, things I pointed out that weren't true along the way, but he generally gets the big things correct. And that there's, there's a big difference between what men think women find attractive and women actually find attractive. Again, according to a study, those two things are not even correlated. That's how far apart they are. So I think the solution that he talks about is going out in the real world is something that I would like to expand on, right? Go out and actually talk to girls in real life. Try to pick up girls in real life rather than spending all day watching videos on what women find attractive. You're gonna get totally different different experience that way rather than sitting around in a circle jerking with a bunch of random black pillars. And if you guys want, we just create a free guide that shows us how to answer five of the most difficult texts that girls will send you. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.